One day, there was a happy little family celebrating a birthday party for a man, and he was the protagonist, Ye Wu. Ye Wu was very close to his family, especially his younger sister, Yun Fei, and she also seemed confused when she was asked about his wishes at the age of 18. But when he said his little wish that he could live happily with his family, it didn't last long because in the middle of the party they experienced a disaster in the form of an explosion that occurred in all areas, which tragically made his father, mother, and younger sister fall from the building they were in. At the same time, a giant creature appeared, making Yehu's body now unable to move due to fear of the figure that spread the aura of death in all directions. But in fact, it was all just a nightmare that he had never experienced, because at this time, Yehu just woke up from his sleep and realized that he had fallen asleep in class. Knowing Yehu was sleeping in the middle of his class, the teacher who found out that Yehu fell asleep in his class must have been angry. As a result, the teacher told him to explain what the Earth Owl era meant and how the student who had previously fallen asleep apologized to the teacher first, along with the alibi he put forward that he accidentally fell asleep because he studied until late at night. As a result, he got a punishment standing at the back of the class. The teacher did it because he forgot that Yehu was a smart kid. If he managed to answer his questions, the teacher would definitely feel embarrassed, because in terms of ability, he was only ranked B. And after Yehu was expelled from his class, the teacher discussed a little about what the earth has been like over the centuries and what the world has experienced. In the year 2036, A.D., a sudden disruption in space and time turned the entire Earth into a dangerous part of the game. Powerful monsters started arriving randomly, but humans miraculously gained strength, measured by the level or ability to develop various occupations and skills. After experiencing disasters for many years, five great alliances were finally formed that suppressed the power of the monsters and formed a new world order, and it was an era filled with danger and still filled with all the mysteries within. Everyone is competing to level up to gain power, but Yehu is different from the usual leveling story. Here is shown the HP and mana bar and a person's level, and this bar can be seen by everyone or the monsters that will appear later. After school, Yehu in the street quarter, he was approached by three bullies in his school. One of them, who had an athletic body and whose name was Luo Feng, he came and asked for some money for this month's protection fee. But here Yehu said that two years ago when Luo Feng was bullied by a senior student to collect protection fees, Yehu protected him like a big brother, but now Luo Feng came to collect protection fees for him. Luo Feng, who heard that, suddenly hit him while saying that at that time he was blind and thought that he was following a genius who was a level three martial artist. At this time, Luo Feng had already leveled up five while Ye Hu was still level three, even though in school, Ye Hu was known as a trash who couldn't level up. But suddenly a kick landed that made Luo Feng fly away, and the brutal kick was done by a female student named Yun Fei, who was the younger sister of Ye Hu. Yun Fei has talent above average because even though she is only 16 years old, she is already a level seven fighter. Yun Fei is predicted to be able to defeat level 10 monsters even though she is only level 7, where Ye Hu came at that time making Luo Feng and two other hooligans run away in fear. Then the younger sister encouraged her brother that someday he would become a strong fighter. But even though he got the nickname Trash because he never once complained about the situation he was in, he also had an unyielding principle to protect his family and happiness. Ye Hu was determined to be the strongest before going home. He realized something strange about his dream earlier. And for that, he was going to invite his family to a party outside to keep them from bad things, like in his dream inside his house. But after he finished partying outside and came back with a full stomach, nothing bad happened like in his dream. Is it possible that I'm worrying too much? He asked himself. But suddenly from behind them, a portal appeared which instantly caused panic among them and the residents around there. And that was because the appearance of the portal usually coincided with the appearance of a monster coming out of the portal. And sure, enough a moment later a creature with eight sharp legs appeared, and it was a level 15 ghost-eyed demon spider. Because there was no time to escape, Yehu's father finally sacrificed himself to buy time so that he could withstand the creature. His father's level only reached level 10, 
and even his punch did not have a big impact on the spider monster. Instead, he had to be hit by the monster's attack, and his body could not be moved anymore. The mother who saw the incident intended to help her husband, but unfortunately her body had to be blown away by the demon spider's attack. Suddenly, one of the demon spider's legs was stuck with an arrow without him realizing it. The attack was carried out by Yun Fei, who had not moved from the scene. On the other hand, with a trembling body, Ye Hu still couldn't believe that his nightmare back then had now come true. In front of that spider demon made his mind feel stagnant if he thought about how far his level was from that creature. During the battle with his current ability, Yun Fei was overwhelmed by the monster. As a result, he also received a wound on her left shoulder, followed by an execution attack aimed at Yun Fei's body, which was now immobilized. Since Yun Fei could not do anything else, Ye Hu finally had to switch the attack aimed at his younger sister, and with that, the demonic spider's pointy legs directly broke through into his body. In the state between life and death that he was currently in, Ye Hu signaled to his younger sister to leave the place immediately before it was too late. But with only 1% of HP left, a notification suddenly appeared saying that the XP points he had accumulated met the requirements and that the king system had been activated. Since the current host was no longer able to move, then the system would randomly select an account with the host name, Emperor Qian. While Yan Fei, who was trying to escape from the place, was again ambushed by the spider demon, although Ye Hu had given her time to escape now, it was no longer avoidable as the creature was right in front of her eyes. But during the loss of direction and hope for survival, there was an attack that could bring the monster back down. Yun Fei, who was behind Ye Hu at this moment, still couldn't believe that the strong person who was emitting flames from his body was his own elder brother. And it was Ye Hu. The spider monster was confused as to how this level 3 trash managed to attack him, and this made the spider monster angry and prepared to attack Ye Hu. But along with his newfound power, Ye Hu quickly darted with his newfound power. And more than that, he also made a flaming sword from his new ability, and his devastating attack managed to cut off both legs of the monster. But unfortunately, with this weak body, Ye Hu was only able to last for three seconds, because his body was still unable to accommodate that much power. In his status, there is a flaming gold-colored energy, which is the time limit of the transformation energy that Ye Hu is currently using. Currently, his blood is locked by the transformation energy, so he must defeat the monster in front of him before the transformation energy runs out, or else he will die in the hands of the monster in front of him. After regenerating, the spider demon tried to escape because the spider monster considered it a waste of time dealing with a level 3 human and intended to find another high-level human. But suddenly, its steps were stopped by the flames spreading around it. If you want to leave, then go to hell, Yahoo said, which made the spider demon sweat after seeing Yahoo's strength just now. The thunderous footsteps showed several high-level fighters who seemed to be coming towards the monster. Don't go there, you'll die, Yahoo said loudly. But they didn't listen at all because these words came out of the mouth of a level three. And of course, they didn't have time to land a single attack. But these fighters were not unaware that their bodies had been entangled in a web that made them unable to move their bodies. Not only that, the web can absorb XP from someone, where the incident this time managed to make the demon spider rise three levels at once after absorbing XP from the previous fighters. The demon spider's power increased drastically, making Ye Hu feel depressed. And after being hit by an attack from the creature, he had to fall, followed by a system that said that ultimate red storm is ready. Ye Hu then got up mercilessly and unleashed a killer move, ultimate red storm, which blazed with his body that was currently exposed to ferocious fire. The spider sensed that this attack was not an ordinary flame. It contained a strong king power. And before its death, the creature had uttered the name of Master Chang, whose form was yet to be seen. Finally, this demon spider had to burn without leaving any residue in the battle area, and whoever managed to finish off the demon ghost spider got 20,000 XP points. But because he had spent too much energy in the end, he had to get the item drop first. Ye Hu was unconscious now because he was suddenly in the system room, and because his body had been severely injured from the previous battle, 
Finally, the system automatically recovered his body using the 10,000 XP points he got before, but at this time he felt confused because his system room this time was completely different from the previous small room, while the room he occupied this time was more like a vast galaxy. And a little explanation about this system room is that since the ancient times of Earth, each player has their own system room to observe and determine their attributes and store various kinds of equipment. Yahoo returned with how the current one was in his new system room, and he found the body that was the source of the powerhouse before this figure had the true identity of a king named Chion Emperor, with max level, and it was discovered that the place where he was currently located was the king's account system. The account system is for the maximum level of countless game planes, and owners can use their XP points to gradually unlock other king accounts. Because their accumulated XP points have reached level 10, so the Chion Emperor account has been automatically activated, and that is the reason why for the past three years, Yehu has been unable to level up, because this system has forcibly absorbed all the XP points he has earned. But that is all not a problem anymore, because Yehu currently has a new goal which is to level up as quickly as possible to unlock more King accounts as soon as possible. With the remaining 10,000 points, he finally leveled up his link. Although he already felt a large amount of power into his body, Yehu was still at level 3, which made him very upset, followed by himself waking up and suddenly waking up in the hospital. His previously severely injured body had now fully recovered thanks to the help of his system, but it was very unlucky that 10,000 points was not a small amount for him. Meanwhile, from the back of the room where Yehu was currently, there were loud voices from Yunfei and his mother, who were known to have only suffered minor injuries, and now they were arguing with the doctor about the nominal medical expenses, which were quite high. Since the four of them were poisoned by elite monsters, they have to use special medicine for long-term treatment in order to fully recover. That's the only way to prevent death, the doctor said. The doctor also said the other two men, namely her father, is not as lucky as Yunfei and her mother. The father is estimated to only live for about a month, while Yehu is trying to determine whose wound is the most fatal, and Yehu is said to not be able to live for more than a week. Yunfei, who listened to the doctor's words, could not hold back tears when she learned this fact, coupled with the expensive medical expenses, urged her mother to immediately sell Thery House to meet their medical expenses. Of course, her mother's decision to sell the house was rejected by Yehu. Of course, Yehu's presence with an unharmed body shocked the doctor and his mother and sister, because previously, Yehu was seriously injured. In the hospital, Yehu appeared completely recovered to the surprise of the doctor. After the four people in his family, he was the only one who suffered the most fatal injuries, but how he recovered was not important. Right now, the most important thing was that the three people in his family needed further treatment and the amount to be paid was 300,000 yuan, which was a huge amount for him. But here, Yehu helped promising to raise the money within an hour. Although it was an impossible thing, the doctor himself was willing to give him an hour in the future. But in his mind, the doctor still couldn't believe how could a boy who was only level 3 have a faster healing speed than a level 60 human like he had seen before. And anyway... Even though he had already tried to rack his brains to earn money with his savings plus the money from defeating the previous Dimension Spider, the amount was still far from the amount of money he needed. But there was one way to earn money quickly, mainly by selling items and equipment. The most valuable item in his current inventory was the level 15 rare magic crystal he got from the previous Demon Spider, and in order to get a fair value from the sale of the item, he rushed to a place where everyone could trade freely regardless of their level mainly the black market. Until finally he arrived at the entrance of the black market, which was now guarded by two big men. Yehu, who intended to enter, was definitely stopped by the guards because it was not a playground for small children. But Yehu told him that he came to the place not to play, but to sell good goods. The guards said, We don't accept children's toys here. Just before he was kicked out by the guards, appeared an old man who seemed to have an important role in this black market. The old man suddenly came and asked about the good goods that Yehu said earlier, and then he showed the goods. The old man apologized for the rudeness of the guards and let Yehu into the black market. 
This underground trading club was quite different because this place was designed to look like a bar. So the young Yehu knew this feeling of awe, and it was far from what he had imagined before. Then on the way to the old man's place, Yehu was intercepted by two unknown men. Of course, it was an act of intimidation because they knew that if a kid who came there was only from a low level, it would be his goal to sell goods. But before they could see what he was carrying, a bodyguard came over. The bodyguard said that it was a guest of Mr. Lee who made the two robbers feel scared just by hearing his name. Mr. Lee himself was a representative of a large group called Huang Zheng Group. Ye Hu finally arrived at the VIP room where Mr. Lee was. Upon arrival, without further ado, Mr. Lee immediately started a business conversation with him, and a negotiation session ensued. Even though he was only level three, he was a smart kid and disagreed with Mr. Lee's offer. Long story short, Mr. Lee would give 100,000 yuan for the price of the magic crystal item. But Ye Hu, who couldn't be fooled, said that he could sell his 200,000 magic crystals elsewhere, and he walked away from the venue. But at the exit, he was intercepted by two huge bodyguards, and it turned out that Mr. Lee had planned the incident. Although he could fight and escape from the venue using the power of the Qian King, Ye Hu didn't want to take risks and cause a mess that would make things difficult for him. During the confusion, a masked bodyguard appeared, who was bigger than Mr. Lee's bodyguard, followed by the appearance of a woman named Miss Mo Kier, who was from the Hanmo group, where Miss Mo Kier immediately offered a magic crystal house for 300,000 yuan. Mr. Lee, who heard the strange offer from the woman, was speechless, and finally he left the room with his bodyguard. It turned out that Miss Mo's purpose was not to be interested in the magic crystal, but only to embarrass Mr. Lee, because there had long been a dispute between the Hanmo group and the Huang Zheng group. Long story short, the arrogant woman finally left and gave the money she promised to Ye Hu. Then Ye Hu returned to the hospital to see his father, who was still unconscious. Suddenly, an obnoxious man with a bald head appeared, who was the director at the hospital. He came there after hearing the news that Ye Hu's family could not afford the medical expenses. The man scolded the doctor for letting them continue to be in the hospital. The doctor also said that the son of this family would bring money for an hour, but after the director heard his words, he also beat up the doctor because it was impossible for a level three child to get that much money. The director then rushed towards the patient intending to take off his oxygen mask. Yunfei did not remain silent and tried to stop the director's harsh treatment, saying that this hospital was not for poor people and commoners like them. Ye Hu, in the heat of the moment, kicked the door as he was angry with the man who had hurt his family. The director, who was now tightly gripping Ye Hu's coat, suddenly caught his hand on fire, and he who was in a panic ran while shouting to put out the fire that burned his hand. The director, who was now tightly gripping Ye Hu's coat, suddenly caught his hand on fire, and he who was in a panic ran while shouting to put out the fire that burned his hand. After the incident, he told the doctor that he had gotten the money and would pay extra for his treatment. This doctor also thought that the director deserved it, because he was also very annoyed with rude and arrogant people like him. After giving the money for his family's medical expenses, Ye Hu approached Yun Fei, who still looked fragile because he could not take care of his parents because of his condition. This Yun Fei also intends to participate in the dungeon competition that will be held the next day at her school, where the winner will get a bonus of about 500,000 yuan, but cannot do so because of her current condition. Of course, after hearing what Yunfei said that she helped, will participate in the dungeon competition tomorrow until the day it starts. The dungeon competition proved that the students who had gathered in the courtyard were very enthusiastic about participating in the competition, which is held only once a year. This is a very high bonus and the main attraction for students because it is different from the previous year, the prize of 500. The presence of Miss Mo made the students even more excited at the welcoming ceremony this time. But not only that, the final winner of this competition can directly enter the Hanmo group known as the Raid Team, which is the top 10 team in the dungeon, and that is the biggest prize according to the students because joining the Hanmo group is tantamount to the road to the peak of life. 
But that does not apply to Ye Hu who entered this competition just for money. For the annual competition this time was the Forest of Shadows, which was filled with level 5 monsters. It was the highest level dungeon in their school. It was also said that this dungeon was never cleared even if joined by a student, the lowest level monsters were all above level 5, and the final boss was a level 10 elite monster. The final boss was the Shadow Dryad, which was why the dungeon was never cleared by students considering this was just a game the students would not die in the dungeon, as it was just a copy, while their real bodies would be placed somewhere else. There are two mechanisms to complete the dungeon this time, mainly PvP and PvE. Based on those mechanisms, this competition allows them to form teams of up to five people, while to find out the ultimate winner of this competition, students are required to collect individual points that they will get from killing each monster. They can also get points from other teams that they defeat, and finally the competition officially begins. Shortly before the students started the competition, they gathered to look for or recruit people who deserved to be part of the team, while Ye Hu was considered trash, and none of the students wanted to invite him to join their team. And steadily, Ye Hu only became the target of ridicule for other students. But in his mind, Ye Hu did not want to be one of the members of the team they would form because they would only be a burden to him. Ye Hu, without further ado, went straight to the registration section, with a team that would only be filled with one person himself. Not long after came Luo Feng with his flock, where Luo Feng intended to recruit Ye Hu into his team. But on one condition, Ye Hu had to lie on the ground and bark like a dog. Ye Hu, who was held fooled Luo Feng. And finally this again became a dispute for the two of them. Luo Feng, who was upset after being fooled, tried to hit him with his fist. But unfortunately the fight that almost happened had to be stopped by the teacher in charge of registration. If you want to fight, do it inside the dungeon. Before exiting, Luo Feng threatened Ye Hu that he would behead him inside the dungeon. After the matter was over, Ye Hu finally managed to register as the only solo player in the dungeon competition this time. Besides that, he also became the first person to enter the dungeon. Not far from where he was now, Miss Mo Kier seemed to remember that the two of them had met before. Miss Mo Kier was interested in how, since he was only a level 3 kid, but he dared to go to the black market alone, and this time, he entered the dungeon alone. Finally, after the pleasantries, the students entered the dungeon. They would split up randomly to a predetermined place. This was done so that there would be no encounters between other teams. In order to avoid fighting between teams, at the beginning of the game, Yahoo, who had just set foot there without wasting much time, immediately finished off the passing monsters. But because the dungeon area was too large and the monsters were also scattered in all different places, a lot of time would be wasted, nor would it be efficient for him considering he was alone. So from there, in order to win this competition, he intended to look for high-level monsters in the dungeon. But since he had no direction of where he was going, Yahoo followed a small spider monster which soon led him to the place where the mother spider was and was seen amongst the nets attached to the trees, had hung a woman known as Ruin Tiantian, who was a close friend of Yun Fei. Ye Hu therefore decided to help the woman. After successfully saving Ruin Tiantian using his fire power, a mother spider named Level 8 Red Spider appeared in order to avoid the poison released by the creature. The two of them ended up falling right into the net trap prepared by the creature which immediately trapped them. After seeing the monster that was now right in front of them, unexpectedly the spider monster just left, where the spider left ruin so that he could breathe a little easier. But according to him, the red spider's habit is to lay eggs on the body of the captured person to reproduce where the creature will return to them when the time comes. Because they can't use their hands, the two of them end up breaking the spider web using their mouths. Long story short, they managed to escape from the spider web that entangled the two of them, and before the creature returned, he also told Ruin to go and return with his team, while Ye Hu would help to finish off the red spider. Ye Hu knew that he was just a level 3 trash, and Ruin suggested not to fight the monster, and invited him to go with her, aka escaped. But he had a purpose there not only to come and become the prey being chased, but his main purpose was to hunt 
and also to vent his anger after being trapped and squeezed together with ruin earlier. As they both survived, the two of them were unexpectedly confronted by the Red Spider Mother. At level eight, Yahoo heard Ruin constantly spewing insults and trash from his mouth, telling her that he didn't care whether Ruin wanted to escape or not, but not to forbid his fight, he was already preparing to bring out the power of the Chion King, while Ruin finally decided to stay there after witnessing firsthand the extremely powerful power emanating from Yahoo's body. The sudden attack from the unsheathed spider was easily dodged by Yehu with a leap, and along with his flaming sword, he made a vertical slash where the power of the attack effect extended towards the spider. The result of his powerful attack instantly killed the spider monster. Ruin was very surprised at how strong the man was. Ruin thought that the man had some kind of ability that could hide his level. By killing the spider monster, he got 1,000 points and Ruin, who did nothing in the fight, just now got 500 points, which made Ruin even more interested in Yahoo. In addition, Yahoo got some drop items that fell from the spider's body that might be useful in the future, and not long after a group of teams approached Yahoo, and this team was led by Li Yong, who seemed to have accumulated 3,000 points in this competition. It is known that this person was previously a group of Ruan, but Ruan was only used as bait to bring in the mother spider, which was the target of the hunt by Li Yong's team. In the middle of their chat, one of the men found a corpse that had been roasted, and it was the spider that was the target of their hunt. Seeing that Li Yong asked Ruan if it was true that the monster was killed by him, and this was confirmed by him saying that he managed to finish off the red spider after forming a team with Yahoo. Of course, he was young and the members would not just believe what he said, because they knew that Yehu was just a famous trash in his school after he couldn't level up. Li Yong believed more that it was Ruin who killed the creature, but in the middle of their argument, a rumbling sound came from the other direction which they knew was coming from a Tyrannosaurus, which was one of the rare elite monsters, and they would get 5,000 points for anyone who managed to kill the monster. Li Yong and his team also intended to immediately rush to the location where they heard the roar. Are you going to the Tyrannosaurus? Yahoo asked them, also saying that they were only looking to die if they dared to fight the Tyrannosaurus with their current abilities. These words made Li Yong angry and there was almost a dispute. But since hunting the Tyrannosaurus was the top priority, they finally ended this dispute and would continue when they managed to kill the monster. What are you saying? I'm saying that with this must power, you'll only be a snack for the Tyrannosaurus. Yehu said this in a light tone that instantly made Li almost attack him. And after Li Yong left, he taught Ruin how to go around and kill small monsters in the forest. But of course, that was not his goal, because hunting small monsters would not be able to give him victory in this competition. His goal now was to sit and watch Li's team fight the Tyrannosaurus and only react when the time came. Meanwhile, at the location where the Tyrannosaurus monster was hiding behind the bushes and could be seen by Li Yong and his team. At that time, it was still doubtful whether the four of them were able to defeat the creature with their strength. Its terrifying aura made them breathless. But Li Yong, this brave and unyielding young man, felt very confident that with his current strength there was nothing to be afraid of. And finally, they moved simultaneously at the same speed towards the monster. But there was one thing they should have realized from the beginning, but it was too late because they were in the middle of the road. One of the men realized that the Tyrannosaurus demon should have been black and green, but the one in front of them at the moment was black and red, indicating that the creature was in a brutal state. Of course, not long after encountering the ferocity of the beast, it didn't take long for the Tyrannosaurus monster to eradicate Li Yong's team members who were only leading himself. Li Yong, who had been faced with the horrifying reality, had now realized that the creature in front of him at the moment was not a creature he could fight, even though he had good agility and acceleration. Li Yong continued to run and has not been able to escape the pursuit of the demon Tyrannosaurus. His idea now is to throw the rage of the Tyrannosaurus to others, and the people closest to his current location are Yehu and Ruan. Although he was out of breath, Li Yong continued to run from the Tyrannosaurus, 
he finally found Ye Hu and Ruin, without lingering, and Li Yong immediately pushed Ruin to replace him when he was hit by the demon's wrath. Now right in front of his eyes, Ruin, who panicked in the middle of the incident, immediately attacked the monster with his power, which apparently did not hit the Tyrannosaurus. And thanks to the stupidity of Ruin's weak attack, the anger that was still directed at Li Yong was immediately replaced by Ruin. On the other hand, Li Yong, who managed to escape from the wrath of the Tyrannosaurus, intended to leave there and leave the creature to the two of them, Li Yong left, using the disappearance skill, and his dense body gradually evaporated into the free air. But Ye Hu, who did not let him escape his responsibility, easily grabbed Li Yong's body, which at that time could not be seen with the naked eye. Suffocated in Ye Hu's hands, Li Yong asked, How can you still see me? while asking Ye Hu released his grip, arguing that the Tyrannosaurus demon had become ferocious, and if the fight continued, they would all die because of the monster. He smiled slightly and showed his incredible strength in front of Li Yong's eyes. With his skills, he hit the earth causing it to shake and emit fire that spread towards the Tyrannosaurus monster. Li Yong witnessed the great power unleashed by Ye Hu. Instead of shameless, Li Yong invited him to form a team with him and defeat the Tyrannosaurus monster together, but all his requests would be submitted by Ruin, who Li Yong had previously alluded to. Despite having captured and begged Ruin to help her persuade Ye Hu to form a team with Ruin, even Ruin didn't want to do that, and in the end the two of them simply left continuing their fight with the monster that had been delayed. Li Yong, who didn't accept the previous incident, took out a poisoned dagger and intended to stab Ye Hu from behind. Li Yong, who didn't accept the previous incident, took out a poisoned dagger and intended to stab Ye Hu from behind. But without even a drop of sweat dripping from his face, Ye Hu was able to easily counter the stab with the fiery blade that suddenly appeared on his back. And that failed stab was the end for Li Yong, as the hot sword stab quickly pierced his skin. Li Yong, who had died in this game, dropped several items in the form of lost skill books. It made the user invisible, and the poison dagger that Li Yong had previously used to stab Ye Hu, and after that, the battle with the Tyrannosaurus resumed. From here, the direction of the battle was increasingly dominated by Ye Hu, who directed attack after attack, which had an impact on depleting the Tyrannosaurus's HP. Actually, with the current powerhouse, it is quite easy to finish off the monster. But there are rules in the dungeon that state that he must kill monsters in a state of anger or ferocity, like the Tyrannosaurus demon he is fighting now. He will not get points or drop items in exchange for killing these monsters. That is why he invited Ruin to join the strategy he built, where he will currently continuously bombard the Tyrannosaurus demon with his power until the creature's HP is below 20. And only after that, Ruin succeeds with the calming skill that can calm the demon's anger, although there is still a 50. 50 chance of success in this strategy succeeding, while the devil that was ferocious and large suddenly turned small and cute. After seeing the cuteness of the Tyrannosaurus this time, Ruin even wanted to have it as a pet, but in Yehu's eyes this creature was just a lump of points that would push his position closer to victory in this competition. Even though this creature gave its cute and innocent appearance in front of Ye Hu, he still ignored it and still finished off the Tyrannosaurus, and instantly he got 5.000 points, in addition to Ruin also getting half of what Ye Hu got. With the fact that Yo got 50,000 XP points, where the number of points he got was much higher than defeating the Ghost Spider at the beginning, which in total from the previous fight, Ye Hu had accumulated as much as 75,000 experience points, which he immediately allocated to his system room. After a while in the system space, he finally decided to buy the Eye of Truth special skill, which allows him to see creatures with a very wide range. Of course, this skill is very useful for Ye Hu to find the hidden location of the dungeon boss, whose position is still difficult for players to find. And then, after exiting the system space, a drop item appeared in the form of a mysterious egg with a strange pattern. In some areas, the egg can be hatched, incubated, or used as a complementary ingredient for cooking rice. But because he didn't need the egg, he finally gave it to Ruin. 
Meanwhile, in another place outside the dungeon area, outside the system space, a mysterious egg appeared. While elsewhere outside the dungeon area was Miss Mo, who felt interested in Yehu after witnessing his fight, and how he managed to defeat an angry Tyrannosaurus demon because it wasn't something that someone with level 3 could handle. And a moment later, she called the principal to inquire about how many points he had accumulated in the dungeon during this question. The principal mentioned that Yehu was a student who could not level up where this fact was only known to Miss Mo. After that, it was clarified by the principal that in the beginning, there was a student who was famous for his genius because since he first entered the school, he was already level three. But after three years, his level did not increase at all, and the reason was unknown to the principal. The old man's words only made him more curious about Yehu, going back to the original question from Miss Mo about Yahoo's points earlier, where now the principal had accessed the basement system to see the points and how it was obtained. The principal was surprised that his current position was in the top three in the ranking table, and right after that, Miss Mo proposed to the principal to immediately announce the ranking of the dungeon and have the information and location of all the players published inside the dungeon, which if this materialized, then the students would pay for the war between the teams, and they would even directly target the other team that had the most points among them, which was Yahoo. Since this request came from Miss Mo Keir as the sponsor of this competition, the principal finally agreed to her wishes. Back to the Shadow Forest dungeon, where the mechanism previously proposed by Miss Mo Keir had been put into effect. It was seen that the player information settings had been published, and Luo Feng started to slash at other teams that had quite a lot of dungeon points. But not long after the announcement about the dungeon ranking was made, he was even surprised by who could occupy the third position in the ranking table. Although Luo Feng didn't know how Ye Hu could accelerate his position, what was certain was that Luo Feng's goal this time was to kill his opponents with the team he brought. Meanwhile, in the forest, where it was shown a man who was the team leader named Xu Qian Yang, who was running from being chased by something known to be Ye Hu. He was running from someone whose existence was like a demon, and even his team intended to torture this person. All of his team were slaughtered by him, and of course, the person in question was Ye Hu, who was nicknamed Level 3 Hell Scum. And without him knowing at all, it turned out that the man behind him had a terrifying strength that made drops of sweat start running down his face. Because he couldn't escape anymore, Xu Tian started to dare to attack Yehu with his fists. But it was only a suicide attack because Yehu's victory was already decided from the beginning of the fight. And with Xu Tian and his allies being slaughtered by Yehu, Yehu's ranking instantly skyrocketed to the first position in the dungeon ranking table. While the dungeon map only shows three teams left in this competition among them, the Luo Fang team, which is currently allied with the Zhang Ge Ye team, and they intend to surround Ye Hu. But currently they are only following and have not started the action. Here, Ye Hu found out that he knew Luo Feng's character very well, and said that, although he looked very awkward in his behavior, he was a very caring person who turned out to be Luo Feng hiding and keeping his distance to observe him, and was about to start attacking when Ruin was caught off guard. After that, Ye Hu used his latest skill to find the location of the undiscovered dungeon boss. But not long after, thanks to the help of the Eye of Truth, he managed to find the hidden location of Shadow Dryad, who is the final boss in this game. After successfully finding the location of Shadow Dryad with his latest skill, he, Ye Hu, rushed to the place where the monster left Ruin, behind a small scum, who had just heard that Ye Hu had managed to find the final boss from behind the tree, finally started his movement. But with his fast movements, Luo Feng suddenly lost the trail that could explain how Ye Hu's whereabouts disappeared instantly. Therefore, Luo Feng and his team immediately changed the direction of their goal to surround and capture Ruin, who was still nearby. In order to attract Ye Hu's attention, then Ruin, who was not far behind Ye Hu, was captured by Luo Feng's team and his men, and asked where she had gone and how she had disappeared from their sight. But unfortunately, in reality, Ruin didn't know where she had gone with that suddenly appeared a huge shadow dryad that covered the area, followed by the roar of the figure that trapped the three Luo Feng members, and it turned out to be the beginning of the appearance of the dungeon boss of the bush, 
Shadow Dryad. Luofeng's dungeon troops, now with Zhang Ye's team of ten, without hesitation attacked and bombarded the Shadow Dryad, using all the best skills they had, and it proved to be effective when the attacks they threw continuously drained the monster's blood. But it didn't last long. Everything changed when the dungeon boss changed to petrification mode, which made all target attacks not cause damage to the monster, followed by an ability that instantly awakened many little dryads and now ambushed Luo Feng's team. Despite being outnumbered, this time Luo Feng's team leader still wanted him to keep trying to beat up the monster, but not his team members, including Zhang Ye's team, who instead ran away and tried to escape the monster's ambush and left Luo Feng alone. Meanwhile, the room that was also captured by one of them was shown, and this was the beginning of Ye Hu's arrival, who suddenly appeared and saved Ruin, who almost lost her virginity. It turned out that Ruin was only used as bait to bring up Luo Feng's team, while Ye Hu only watched them from a distance, while leading Luo Feng to where the dungeon boss was, and it was all designed by Ye Hu. Luo Feng, who again felt that he had been fooled by Ye Hu, was even more furious after learning this fact. Because he was still busy fighting monsters, Luo Feng finally ordered team leader Zhang Ye to finish off Ye Hu, but unfortunately they were just a piece of roasted meat in front of Ye Hu Hao. With the power of fire from the king, he immediately finished off the man. After killing several monsters, the angry Luo Feng was made high and came straight to him and intended to attack him. But with just a light slap, Luo Feng was immediately blown away. Here, Luo Feng said that Ye Hu wouldn't be able to finish off the boss monster alone in front of his eyes, but Ye Hu wanted to show how he used his overwhelming power. With the power of fire forming hot needles in the air and freely raining down and piercing the bodies of the monsters that died instantly. Not only that, but the indiscriminate attacks also pierced Luo Feng's remaining team in the middle of the battlefield. And with the death of the little dryad, the dungeon boss absorbed the energy essence of the monsters that were now scattered on the battlefield. And thanks to this absorption, the body that seemed to have started to crack before suddenly turned into shadow state mode. The shadow state mode itself was smaller in stature than before, but had a greater intensity of power and was the final form of the Shadow Dryad. It was as if the speed of sound was directly behind Yahoo, and how it felt that it wasn't the speed that a level 10 boss had, with its body size reduced to a minimum, and its speed increased. Yahoo was easily blown into free air, followed by a follow-up attack directly aimed at him. On the other hand, Luo Feng, who was watching the battle, was laughing at Yahoo, who with all his ego still wanted to face the creature alone. Ye Hu, who didn't hear Lu out of his words, showed his fangs again this time, where with just a breath, Ye Hu was behind the boss monster's back. He directly attacked with several swift attacks that couldn't be seen by ordinary eyes. And these big attacks succeeded perfectly in killing the Shadow Dryad dungeon's boss and earning 10,000 points as the first assassin of this Shadow Force dungeon to kill the boss monster. Ending the dungeon competition session this time, just like the opening of the gate to the real world. Luo Feng, who previously looked down on Ye Hu, now knelt in front of him after seeing Ye Hu's ability to defeat the boss monster himself. He also apologized to Ye Hu and asked him to be an older brother like he used to be. But here Ye Hu said that this shameless Luo Feng didn't have the qualifications to be called his younger brother, until finally, Luo Feng ran away from Ye Hu by tearing off a piece of paper that could teleport him at close range, and Luo Feng was now in front of the gate. He did it so that he wouldn't kill Luo Feng could still benefit from clearing the dungeon this time. But unfortunately, before Luo Feng managed to enter the gate, suddenly Ye Hu's slash came from a distance, and the attack managed to kill Luo Feng, which made him now get nothing in the dungeon competition this time. After successfully defeating the boss monster, he helped not forget to get some rare drop items and healing items, but the items were not very useful for him, so from that Ye Hu could see that Ye Hu handed over the items to Ruin, who was more suitable to use them. Before they could get out of the dungeon suddenly, there was a warning followed by an earthquake. This was an abnormal event inside the dungeon, and it was known that this abnormal event occurred when there was a very serious problem from outside 
or in the real world. Usually for events like this, there are abnormal monsters that appear in the dungeon, and inevitably they have to face these monsters to get out of the dungeon. Yehu and Ruan were still inside the dungeon, and were faced with an abnormal situation due to a serious problem that occurred outside the dungeon. And if the two of them did not get out of that place immediately, then it was very likely that they would be trapped and would never be able to get out of there. Then, halfway through, Ruin still stumbled in a critical condition, even though it was very inconvenient for her. But here it was seen how Yehu still helped her, because Yehu had decided beforehand that Ruin was part of the team formed inside the dungeon. So in order to save her from destruction, Yehu threw her towards the gate, which as soon as the time ran out was immediately sealed off, while Yehu, who was still inside the dungeon, used a scroll that could teleport her copy body to her original body outside the dungeon. Previously, he threw Ruin because he was sure that Ruin didn't have a teleportation scroll like the one he was using now, even though it was a common thing for every player who entered the dungeon. After coming out, he was teleported right in front of the entrance gate to the dungeon, but unlike before, the gate seemed to have been destroyed, which indicated something was wrong. Not far from where he was, Ruin was seen still crying for Yehu, who he thought was still trapped in the dungeon. And finally, Ruin realized that Yehu was still alive. Although she talked a lot in the dungeon in the real world, her real nature was very shy. After three soldiers appeared armed and in full uniform, judging from the variations, it could be said that they were the Black Tiger Mercenary Group. They were the group that had been killing people in the safe zone for about five years ago. These suspected people had been exiled, and the question for Yehu was why this group of criminals were in his school. But what was certain was that these three warriors would not let Yehu and Ruin go so easily, especially after seeing Ruin's curves which made one of them stick out their tongue. Don't worry, the three of them are already in my hands, said Yehu, who immediately upset the three warriors with the words that came out of this level three person. But with his strength, even though the enemy had reached level 15 in seconds, the two people were killed immediately, while one more person was left to die by Yahoo's way for the sake of extracting some information from him. The guard said this is impossible how Yahoo could defeat level 3 and kill us so easily. The guard then intended to give up everything he had for life. The soldier was pardoned, but Yahoo did not hear that and directly stabbed the guard with his fire sword. Feeling frightened, the soldier finally leaked the information that the arrival of the Black Tigers in their school aimed to kill Miss Mo Kier from the Hanmo group on orders from the Huang Zhang group who paid them not only let them enter the safe zone, but the Huang Zhang group also lent the leader of the Black Tigers a rare item to limit the bodyguard's movements around Miss Mo Kier. And after getting important information, Ye Hu removed the fire sword stuck in the soldier's body, which made the soldier almost die so he gave him a blood-boosting drink to save his life. But unfortunately, it was completely useless, because from the beginning, Yahoo never once said he would spare the soldier's life. As a result, the soldier died and burned, thanks to the burning effect that was still stored in his body. After the incident with the school being blocked, Yahoo immediately got up to immediately go look for the safest hiding place. Meanwhile, Yehu will save the lives of the people in the school because right now, he already knows what to do to save Miss Mo Kier. After all, that woman still has a valuable debt for completing the previous dungeon competition. As soon as Yehu tended to save the people still in the school, he saw two soldiers patrolling from behind the pillar. The soldiers of the Black Tiger group were on average level 15 and superior in number. Meanwhile, teachers whose level was between 10 and 22 certainly had no chance of being able to face this group, while to know the ins and outs of the current condition of his school, Yehu still needed 20 minutes of cooldown to wait for his eye skills to reactivate finally. He decided to get more information from the two men he had previously seen, and then was shown a room where it was seen that students were being held captive, ordered by a large level 25 man, also seen as a teacher named Lee who was seen being victimized and would be used as a violent material for the inhumane act that would soon be carried out by the Black Tiger captain. Among those who were taken prisoner was also Luo Feng, who was looking at the other students who were undergoing punishment and continued with the teacher who was now ready to be eaten by the captain. 
But suddenly Luo Feng, who witnessed the man's affection, did not remain silent and immediately lunged at him. It turns out that Teacher Li is like a goddess to him. That's why Luo Feng didn't stay when he saw his goddess being mistreated. But unfortunately, Luo Feng's launch did not affect the captain, who instead reversed his attack. But right now, the man was interested in Luo Feng because of his bravery, and for trying to save a woman like a hero, and for his bravery, Luo Feng would be recruited as one of his subordinates, as long as he dared to kill the students who were being held captive. Even though he was a thug, in heart, the virtuous Luo Feng would not willingly join a group of thugs like a black tiger. Then Luo Feng directly pointed his knife at the captain, but it seemed useless, because there was too much level gap between the two men. The angry captain immediately pointed his sword at Luo Feng, but Luo Feng was unexpectedly shocked to see the man who had almost killed him suddenly fall with a deadly spider falling stuck behind his back, and of course the attack was carried out by Ye Hu who couldn't level up. Ye Hu who instantly appeared in the disappearance mode of the soldiers who were completely unaware of Ye Hu's presence. Their captain who was knocked down by him did not remain silent. They attacked Ye Hu simultaneously but they were just a collection of points that he would use to raise his level. After a short fight before finally, the detained students could now breathe a sigh of relief due to the arrival of Ye Hu, who managed to slaughter the black tiger warrior guarding there. The man who had just witnessed Luo Feng's heroism said that he was now eligible to become his younger brother, and Luo Feng naturally accepted Ye Hu's offer with joy. Luo Feng, who wanted to become stronger, squatted in front of Ye Hu, until finally someone gave him a knife on the floor which Luo Feng was going to use to execute the surviving captain. With the death of Captain Black Tiger in Luo Feng's hands, the level immediately skyrocketed, increased by five at once, and now it had reached level ten. It was such an amazing thing that Luo Feng kowtowed again in front of Ye Hu and promised that this loyalty was only for Ye Hu. After the prisoners were rescued, the cooldown time for the skill had indeed expired. However, he immediately activated his skill to find out all the conditions happening in the school. From what he saw using his skill, many teachers and students were kept in the gymnasium. Although the number of guards was not very high, there were many of them, while the warehouse area would be a good hiding place for them since there were no patrols or guards. There were also two level 40 masters in the building among them, a level 45-1 in the break room. There was no doubt that he was the leader of the Black Tiger group who had level 20 bodyguards around him, and also a level 40 who was currently in the school parking lot. Finally, Ye Hu, who already knew the current conditions assigned Luo Feng to immediately take the people indoors to the warehouse area to save themselves. And just in case Luo Feng would also be given spider fangs to guard against threats that could arise at any time. Meanwhile, Ye Hu was running towards the parking lot towards the location of the level 40 Black Tiger members because he still didn't have the confidence to save Miss Mo Kier, who was currently guarded by the level 45 leader. Even then, he still didn't know whether he could fight this level 40 boss or not. In his system room with a total accumulation of 50,000 in XP points, Ye Hu raised his link level, which is currently level 21. So this link level is Ye Hu's link level with King Qian's account, which will increase when he uses the enhanced power of King Qian. And a while later, the full power that now rests on any Ye Hu appears. And finally, Ye Hu has now successfully leveled up to level 4. And after level 5 and after his link level reaches level 20, how does he unlock special talents? And he also chooses defensive talents that he thinks are useful for him in battle. After that, it was shown the soldiers talking about a place in the middle of nowhere. The soldier was suddenly ambushed and briefly burned by Ye Hu's flames, which he extinguished even though he managed to dodge the bullets deployed by other soldiers. Suddenly a bomb that fell from the air exploded right towards where they were at the moment and the bomb was thrown by a man with level 40, the deputy commander of the Black Tiger named Big Gun, but apparently the explosion just now had no effect on Ye Hu, who instead directed the flames caused by the explosion towards the soldiers who were still around the area. Big Gun, who saw the incident, was immediately amazed, and said how could the boy in front of him at this time survive the Granada explosion, which had such a strong, destructive power. 
and it turned out that Ye Hu was able to easily withstand the explosion thanks to the defensive talent he had previously obtained. During the battle, Ye Hu and the big gun realized their difference lies in the physical part. At his current level, the big gun has a strong enough physical strength that makes it difficult to hurt, and in terms of equipment. In addition to having a weapon with unlimited ammunition, the big gun also has a shield that can ignore damage making this battle much more difficult than before. But with his skills, Yahoo still has tricks to be able to beat the man to do tricks. This time, Yahoo had to get closer to the target, even though Big Gun's attacks repeatedly injured him until his blood was drained as well. After taking Yahoo, he held a shield, and after being in a position that felt sufficient, he immediately used his latest defense skill called deflagration. Not only as a defense, but this skill also has the effect that if he is close to the enemy, he can use fire to shoot burn targets and consume his enemy's equipment resistance. And after a minute of surviving Big Gun's attack, suddenly all of Big Gun's equipment immediately fell without him knowing what happened to him. But as we know it was the effect of Yahoo's deflagration skill, it was like a misfire for Yahoo. But actually the trick he used this time was quite successful, along with recovering 30 GP. Big Gun, who still didn't want to give up, intended to throw a bomb at him. But unfortunately, Yahoo's bounce speed was smarter than Big Gun, which finally made him give up being deputy commander. Big Gun, who was now cornered while apologizing and claiming to be just an ordinary worker who did all this on the orders of his commander, but to give him a chance he must have wanted some valuables, until finally he drove himself into a car that already had a level 40 treasure chest inside. In his mind, the cunning Big Gun said that for once he would do whatever he wanted, and wait for reinforcements to come to his place. And when the time came, he intended to torture Ye Hu until the torture was more painful than death. But as soon as the chest was opened by him, he who turned out to be more cunning than him stabbed his sword because he must always be vigilant and would eliminate all enemies that could harm him. After eliminating the big gun with his strategy, Yahoo got 30,000 XP points, as well as a copy of the level 40 dungeon key, which was outside the safe zone, and it would come in handy later, but the real jackpot was in the treasure chest in front of him, there were even more valuable items. There were also ancient rare magic crystals that could be converted into experience points. After entering the system room and exchanging 10 ancient magic crystals, he got 100,000 experience points, and currently, he had accumulated a total of 130,000 XP points. Although he was hesitant to get those points thanks to the recommendation of the system, Yahoo finally decided to open a new King account. The thing that is currently in his system room, thanks to the system's recommendation, finally chose to open a new King account, in addition to King Qian by spending 100,000 experience points. And the King account that Yahoo got was Moss about a mad scientist who came from another world and is known to have caused a lot of destruction thanks to his talents and inventions. And he is not a fighter-type king, but even though he is not a real king, this guy has reached the top of the world with his crazy inventions. Moss does not have a fixed skill. The skill will change according to the title name. And the title currently opened is Master of Engineering. And Yahoo can upgrade the skill or title up to level 10 which makes Yahoo feel interested in Crazy Moss, which means he is a support type, but has decent skills. And not long after that, suddenly, Qian King's main account on his body instantly switched to Crazy Moss. Coinciding with that, suddenly a flying robot appeared and called Yahoo as the master. The robot admitted that he was Crazy Moss's creation, which was created through interdimensional artificial intelligence and the robot named Weiss, from this second onwards, the robot will always be by Yahoo's side where the purpose is to teach Yahoo how to conquer the world. But unfortunately, there is not the slightest intention in Yahoo to do such a fantastic thing. And then it is also explained by Weiss that if this engineering master's degree can parse and then combine objects related to engineering and machinery to create new objects, but there are limits to what can be parsed and combined by objects, namely existing objects a level that is twice as high as their current level. And because he currently has two king accounts, he can switch two accounts and change them as well. Then Yahoo, who is currently preparing to rescue Miss Mo Kier, finally comes out of her system room. While in the room, we will be shown Miss Mo, who has now been captured by the Black Tiger group, 
and we will also be shown the person who led the kidnapping of Miss Mo Kier. He is a level 45 fighter named Maru. The reason why Miss Mo can be kidnapped so easily is because the mask of the powerful bodyguard guarding her has now turned to stone after being hit by the Medusa item that each Huang Zheng group gave Maru to conquer them for sure. And because the Black Tiger group is a group that is crazy about money, he finally made an offer to Miss Mo's group, and Huang Zheng gave them 50 million yuan. And if Miss Mo gave twice the amount of money Huang Zhang's group gave, Maru would let her go. But it seems that Miss Mo will not agree to the crazy offer of Maru's group. Because Miss Mo Kier did not take his offer, Maru will immediately carry out his goal from the beginning of killing Miss Mo Kier with his two swords. But suddenly a line appeared that thwarted Maru's action at that time. And this barrier was, of course, the power of Ye Hu, who suddenly came and immediately collected the prize money from the previous competition. Plus, $10 million for Ye Hu if he could save Miss Mo Kier from the kidnapping she had experienced. On the other hand, Nana's barrier, who saw how, she thwarted his action without further jump and attacked him with all his might. Maru, who saw how he foiled his action without further jumped up and attacked him with all his might. But even so, thanks to his defensive talent Ye Hu, only lost 20 of the amounts of HP he had. On the other side of the barrier, Miss Mo cared about Ye Hu saying that this incident had nothing to do with him and he didn't need to come and die as a hero, as well as Miss Mo, who also told Ye Hu how to get out of there right away. Don't be happy Miss Mo Kier if Ye Hu dies, or should I collect points and my bonus gets money, said Ye Hu. Then the soldiers who tried to destroy Miss Mo Kier's protective barrier were immediately shocked, even though the barrier energy was exhausted after they attacked, but suddenly it was full again. This is impossible, they said. Realizing the strangeness just now, Maru realized there was something wrong with the level of the four boys who were currently side by side with Yahu, and thought that she could somehow hide her true level. While the battle continued with Maru throwing several grenades at them, and Maru arrogantly said that grenades were children's toys in front of her protective shield. But after that granada exploded, this grenade is not just any grenade like grenades in general, this grenade contains a spider web that can gradually drain a person's HP, and this is the work that Yehu made with the mastery of engineering skill named Sticky Bomb. This item is made of spider silk ghost, and the grenade combined can control the target's movement for 10 minutes and cause continuous damage. But with her strength, Maru was able to escape from the entanglement of the spider web, so that finally Maru, who acted as a guard this time, would show her true strength. And with a strong slash, Yehu's HP was drained by 50% because he had a red and blue buff. His speed and strength increased dramatically. Yehu's slash attack was easily avoided, followed by attack after attack until finally he was cornered with only 10 GP. He automatically activates the HP lock that can lock his blood and will not take damage for 20 seconds, and he immediately switches to King Qian mode. Even though he has directed some of his fire abilities, it doesn't seem to have much effect on Maru, but that's just the beginning of the action that Yahu will show after making it out of the big fire. Maru was immediately faced with a strange thing, because in front of him at this time, the demon weapon had appeared and shot successively at him. Maru realized that the weapon belonged to his subordinate big gun, but unlike the previous weapon, it seemed to have undergone modifications with unlimited ammunition. The weapon can also lock and shoot targets automatically in front of Yehu. Maru's modified weapon was overwhelmed. But it turned out to be only a moment because with his movement speed, Maru was finally able to overcome the weapon that disturbed him. But it turned out that the attack was only a distraction. Yehu, with his poison dagger from behind, got an easy opportunity to stab Maru. And instantly, Maru was finished off with Yehu's poison coated dagger. Maru, who is now down, suddenly activates the effect of a rare item called the Guardian Shield, which can be passively immune to one-hit kill special effects and restores 30% of the user's HP. Here, Maru feels very upset because the item costs so much Maru, who is now even more furious than before, managed to beat Yehu, followed by Yehu's HP lock mode, which had run out. In his mind this time, Maru did not expect that the boy he fought was so strong. 
While pulling out his last ace card, Maru then injected a liquid into his body that instantly filled him with enormous electrical energy. It was a kind of epic item called Lightning Beast Blood that turned the user into a thundering beast and drastically increased all his stats in five minutes. This was the first time Yahoo was faced with a fight against a high-level fighter. It's not just tactics that can be changed. They also have various tools and combat items that make it even more difficult to predict what will happen in front of him. And now stood the frightening figure of Maru, who had changed her body shape. Maru, who intended to duel equally with Yahoo, was immediately surprised after Yahoo said that he didn't want to fight anymore. It was because he currently had no attacks that could be thrown while the words of a man made Maru even more angry. He felt it was a waste because he had used the most valuable ace for him. Even from this group, she couldn't do anything to you. Still looks relaxed. Maru, who is now preparing to exert all her strength, even though he is just silent. It turns out that Yehu has prepared something for him, where the attack from Maru was successfully stopped by Miss Mo's bodyguard. So why are the two masked men targeted? Secretly, Yehu heard Maru's loud conversation about the masked man who had been petrified because of the Eye of Medusa. And the item in the chest turned out to be an antidote to turn the masked man back to normal. Then, Yehu proceeded to the direction of the fight, where the combo attacks of the two masked men were not the slightest bit able to counter the attacks of the two of them. The rhythmic fist attacks of the inner strength easily sent Maru flying towards the wall. The attack just now was the closing attack of Miss Mo's bodyguard. Inevitably, he silently witnessed the absolute power of the two men in front of him and made such a cold sweat after watching the fight. Shortly after Miss Mo Kier arrived, Miss Mo explained why she didn't remove the rock effect from the bodyguard, but started and instead fought to the end and put herself in a state of danger. Yahoo replied that he just wanted to gain valuable experience by fighting fighters because money can't buy that here. Miss Mokir immediately reacted strangely because after seeing so many people in this life, she was the first unique person she met. Back to the topic, Yahoo immediately asked for a bonus of 10 million money for saving Miss Mo's life. 500 million yuan prize for winning the dungeon competition, and all of that will be paid by this rich Miss Mo. Until finally, we will return to how Maru, who is currently unable to move anymore. But he is still not dead, and for the punch on the last punch will be given to Yahoo. Before his death, Maru said that the monsters outside his safe zone were secretly gathering monsters. The safe zone will sooner or later become destroyed. Maru, who was on the verge not long after Maru woke up Maru's life. Miss Mo offered a way to join the Mo team, the team that is the attack team of the Han Mo cause, because of her greeting. At this time, Yahoo has qualified to join the top ten of the Han Mo group. But it seems that she does not want to answer Miss Mo's time off. Yehu instead wants to discuss business, because at this time, Yehu still can't decide whether to join the Mo team or should we answer. And because Yehu likes money, the two continue to talk about business. After discussing business with Miss Mo, the principal came and greeted Yehu like a hero, because he had previously managed to save Miss Mo and even the school in the same time Yehu's actions had freed the school. The principal wanted to give him a special award even though Yahoo wanted to refuse the award, as long as all the underground competition prizes were given due to the principles of the Shadow Forest. Yahoo could no longer refuse the award that would be given for renting Yahoo. The award would be given Miss Mo. Meanwhile, their school would be closed for the next three days due to the previous incident. Until finally, Yahoo is now together with Yunfei, as well as the father who is currently getting better. But even so, the effect of the poison on him has not disappeared, and it takes time to fully recover. Therefore, at the time when he was thinking about whether there might be a better medicine so that the father could recover, where he had the thought coincided with the heir Dr. Dean Jung, who was doing routine treatment together, who served as the leader. His arrival there was intended to apologize for the high conflict of Yehu and the previous instructor. And before he left the room, Dean Zhang asked if hanging the hospital that the hospital has a quick cure medicine for father. Dr. Dean replied that there is but the price will be very expensive because it is amazing how he attracted the top brass. 
Yehu's father seeing this said that he just needs to rest and does not need to spend a lot of money to buy medicine. Suddenly Yehu he took out an ace from the card that immediately made Dean Zhang break out in a cold sweat just by turning on the card. Dean Zhang asked Yehu how good you have a card Yehu gave him was to give fashion, and Miss Mo, Dr. Zhang immediately changed his attitude to Yehu because it felt like a VIP card that could be a property property among other hospitals under the Hanmo group. It didn't take long for Dr. Zhang to immediately order the doctor to transfer the patient to the most expensive VIP room, as well as the three best antidotes to be given to his father as a gift. On the other hand, the doctor didn't expect that the card he was currently holding would have such a powerful effect. After Dr. Wu came back in a panic, and reported that the best antidotes and medicines in the hospital were gone. While the suspect was the director at the beginning, since there were no more high-end bitter drugs in that hospital, and in order to get the expensive items that were only available in the auction, Yahoo thought the director stole the expensive items to get the demanding money. The only place the director wanted to sell them in the black market that's why currently Yahoo was thinking of going to the black market to get the bidding that might be their savior, as it was an unfair decision to go with him to look for the high-end bidder, since Yun Fei was tired of being in the hospital. On the way to the black market, it was him who told Yun Fei about the victory he won in the dungeon competition and saved Miss Mo Kier from the incident that happened to her back then. But suddenly their journey was thwarted by three hooligans who were trying to extort money from Yehu. Yehu stood directly in front to deal with the group seeing that Yun Fei was still in a weak state and had just recovered from her treatment. Yehu told Yun Fei that the matter of fighting and killing would be left to him so that Yun Fei would not feel any further suffering. And as usual, Yehu, who was only at level 4, was currently just an object of ridicule for these villains. After seeing Ye Hu's confidence in trying to protect Yun Fei, who was at a higher level than him, Ye Hu, who felt slighted, he immediately walked towards them and said, I don't want to kill in front of my sister, you guys. If you have to submit, want to survive. Although Ye Hu's words made the thugs explode in emotion, and Dan immediately clenched his fist towards Ye Hu, but suddenly why a quick shot from a stick could easily knock the man down. It turned out that it was not Yahoo's attack, but a man who had high speed and instantly beat up the thugs. The man called himself a hiker, and since their purpose was the same by going to the black market, finally, the handsome man invited them to go together. But this unknown man's kind treatment on Yahoo's suspicion increased. However, the man, and helped to dispel the suspicion of both of them, the man finally revealed his identity. And after he said it further, it was found that this man was an alumnus of the same school. An Xiong was known as the first genius in the history of the academy, and was often invited by the pro team within a year after he entered the academy. After knowing his true identity, Ye Hu finally decided to go with him to the black market as well. But even so, it still did not eliminate Ye Hu's vigilance, because he was a member of the Huang Zheng group, the arch enemy of the Hanmo group. After a while, the three of them have now arrived at the entrance of the black market, which is heavily guarded by two men who seem familiar with Ye Hu. The arrival of someone inside who already knows the guard is welcomed by them, but Ye Hu who also entered was intercepted by these two guards. It turned out that they were not angry. Instead, they welcomed Ye Hu here very well and respected him. Yahoo, who witnessed the incident, reacted in disbelief to what he saw after seeing how he could receive better treatment than him. Back to Yahoo, who finally went inside while An Xiong still couldn't believe how the high status Miss Mo Kier could invite someone from this level to join Mo's team. But that's what made him interested in that level 4 student. When they got to the black market hall and had different goals, they ended up going their separate ways. But before that, the senior had already added Yahoo on his friend list. And then, because this black market hall was very spacious and because they had only been to the VIP room, before they ended up not knowing where to get the deals they were looking for. And that's when he felt the aura from behind very intensely. The sharp gaze of a woman who was constantly watching Yahoo. It turned out that the woman was a member of the Hanmo group named C.U., who was the resident agent of the Hanmo group in this black market, 
where CEU offered to guide Yahoo later, the group was then escorted to a place known as the VIP Room of the Handwheel Group, which place provided various kinds of facilities for VIPs. But in the current house room is a Hanmo trading base that has the highest authority in the black market, where this place also has various high-level rare and hidden equipment that are not available in other free markets. And all of them can be obtained as long as Yahoo has money. But right now, Yahoo was not interested in equipment, but rather items. Not long after he searched for sure enough, Yahoo knew how he found the bidder he needed, and the person selling the item, of course the director who had been suspected before. The question for Yahoo right now was why a director whose salary was already high would take such a high risk to steal medicine just to get money. And even why would the bidder ask for the black market directly for a higher price than usual? This is usually sold for 100000 per bottle, but the one sold by the director is only for 600000 per bottle. But that did not discourage Yahoo from the beginning to get the item. The donation aid to make the transaction asked the woman to contact the seller and said she would pay her one million per bottle as long as she met directly with the seller here. Yahoo saw how he had to prepare a strategy that he would immediately execute. After that, finally the salesman was taken roughly to a room by the officer and confronted by a Hal who had been waiting for the man's arrival, which the director must have known how to do. But this time, the director instead disguised himself with a wig which he thought was a perfect disguise so that his identity would not be easily recognized. But at first glance, Yunfei recognized the director's face, which Yahoo knew from the beginning. She intended to do something while the director panicked after the perfect disguise was exposed. He intended to leave. How could a child have that much money to buy the antidote? And that's when he immediately took out his passport. According to Miss C.U., the card alone is worth 50 million rupiah, and that's not including the money inside and immediately surprised the director after finding out that Yahoo is very wealthy. And after knowing Yahoo's wealth, the director, without hesitation, immediately unmasked him and stated that he was the director. Long story. Short after the director took out the antidote, he brought was a fake bottle. After checking to Miss C.U. with her modified eyes, it was confirmed that the potion was a product belonging to the Hanmo group that was stolen by the director. Because of this incident, Miss C.U. finally ordered the officer to immediately dispose of the bottle. The director was thrown out of the safe zone to be eaten by monsters, and before leaving, the man said that the safe zone they were in would soon be ambushed by monsters, and none of them would be able to escape. Only the old gate could save humanity. As well as the director also said the Old World King sect, where the director's words were almost the same as what Maru said before his death. But it was still a mystery in this story. But Miss C.U. said that the man's words were just a conspiracy theory that they didn't need to worry about at all. And she also explained that the place they were currently living in was the ninth safe zone that had been standing for 50 years, where this safe zone had never even received an attack from the monster invasion. So according to the Hanmo Group's rules, the lost assets of the company belonged to whoever found them. That was why the antidote was given to C.U. without any help. And since the 3 million yuan that was meant to buy the antidote was not used at all, in the end, the money would be given to Yunfei to buy the equipment she wanted. Meanwhile, Yehu was invited by Miss Si Yu to join the secret auction that was held once a month, while Yunfei would stay in the room since she looked very excited while choosing the value of the equipment to buy. Finally, the two of them went to the auction that was located in the center of the nine safe zones. Yahoo intended to spend 15 million out of a total of 17 million. Yahoo was immediately led to the basement of the Victoria's Secrets auction. It seemed that the name Victoria's Secret was not too unfamiliar to Yahoo's ears, where the auction lovers who came from nine safe zones had gathered. They were also disrobed after entering it in order to maintain the confidentiality of the identity that was behind the rope of the magnificent room and its striking design made it a special attraction. This place is the auction dungeon, Victoria's Secret. This place has no level requirements to enter, but requires special permission to enter. To enter this place, Yahoo was guided by CU. When entering this place, 
Yehu was confused why he was wearing a strange robe. Siyu then explained that if everyone entered the dungeon, they would automatically use a protective cloak to prevent identity exposure. Yehu understood. That way they could raise the price as much as they liked, regardless of each other's faces. Seeing the contents of this place impressed Yehu, he was sure that it took a lot of money to design this huge black market. Seeing Yehu, who was admiring this place, Siyu invited Yehu to stop watching and sit down immediately because the auction was about to start. A moment later, a host appeared to welcome the customers. He introduced himself as the organizer of the Victoria's secret auction. Yehu then asked if Weiss could play a supporting role in this auction, and Weiss replied that he could. Weiss explained that based on the characteristics of the auction items, combined with Yehu's attributes, Weiss would give an accurate purchase value rating from one to five stars. That way, Yehu wouldn't have to spend a single penny of the money he lost and bought an item that was perfect for Yehu. Yehu was very impressed that it was a useful skill and asked if there were any others. But unfortunately, Weiss replied that there were no more skills. Weiss then said that if Yehu wanted to unlock more skills, he needed to increase the account link level as soon as possible. Yehu became disappointed and thought to talk about it after the auction. But suddenly, Weiss realized that on the platform below, one of them was the person named An Chung that Yehu met before. Yehu was also surprised by An Chung's existence. He thought this was unreasonable because with An Chung's status and financial resources as a reserve team member, An Chung was not qualified to participate in the auction and he was not qualified to sit with the chairman. Therefore, Yehu realized that An Chung's secret was not much different from him. A moment later, the auction host announced the start of this auction and told that there would be ten very valuable auction items. He then started with the first lot, which was a level 70 ancient magic crystal. The bidders were surprised to see an ancient quality magic crystal. Moreover, the magic crystal was of a high level. The host explained that this magic crystal was obtained by a certain group of mercenaries after paying a high price for the advanced dungeon. As long as one uses it, their level will definitely rise. The host then opened the starting price with 1 million, and each price increase could not be less than 500,000. Immediately, the participants began to raise the price of the item. In the midst of all that, Siyu asked if Yehu hadn't considered buying the ancient magic crystal, because Siyu knew Yehu was deliberately hiding his level. Siyu knew that Yehu's level was actually still far below level 70, and the ancient magic crystal would really help Yehu. Yehu became impressed because he really couldn't trick Siyu's eyes. But even though the item was quite useful, Weiss said that the purchase value of this magic crystal was only two stars because XP points were meaningless to a great expert. So, Weiss argued that there was no need to spend limited money on XP points. Yehu also agreed with Weiss's words. Then suddenly, An Chung, who was on the platform below him, raised the price to three million. After An Chung bid three million, the host asked who could bid higher. After confirming that no one had offered a higher price, the host congratulated An Chung for acquiring the level 70 ancient magic crystal. This made Yahu wonder. An Chung's initial expenditure alone was already three million. He did not expect that An Chung was so rich. Yahu wondered if the ancient magic crystal was to increase his level as quickly as possible and join the core team, or was it for another purpose? The host then began to announce the second item. He showed a cell phone lock potion. After use, it increases the blood lock status for 30 seconds. He then explained that everyone knows that cell phone lock potions are very rare. Coupled with the epic quality, this item became rarer than rare. The show opener also opened the price from 2 million. Seeing that item, Weiss said that she couldn't give more than one star for the purchase of that ugly potion. Because as long as Yahoo had the title of Master of Alchemy, as long as Yehu could unlock it, then this level of potion was very easy to make. Hearing that made Yehu very excited. So, he was excited because he had another way to make a lot of money. Soon, the potion was won by VIP 11 for 4.5 million. The host then showed the third lot of this auction. That item was the Royal Cloak, an epic equipment that could let people fly freely in the sky. Once in use, users can fly at high speed for a duration of five minutes. 
The height cannot exceed 20 meters and the cooldown time is 24 hours. The host revealed the item's starting price of 3 million. Weiss wonders why the world always produces flashy items. Since it didn't have any effect, Weiss thought that it was just a one-star item. But Yahoo seemed very interested in the item as he thought the robe looked cool. Weiss tried to stop him because Yahoo was very poor and couldn't afford such a flashy toy. Yahoo finally agreed because she didn't want to spend money on such equipment. Then shortly after, CU raised her hand and raised the price of the robe to six million. CU finally won the item for six million. Because CU could see Yahoo really liked the item, CU said that life is short, so you have to fight for what you like. Therefore, being too thoughtful is not a good thing. CU then wanted to give the item to Yahoo. Seeing that, Weiss warned Yahoo that CU had a dark purple spectrum, which meant that he was calculating. Yahoo refused on the grounds that he couldn't accept it without doing anything. Moreover, Yahoo had been helped a lot by CU today, so he didn't have the face to take valuables from CU. Yahoo then asked CU to keep the robe for him, and he would buy it for eight million when he had the money. In his heart, CU felt a little disappointed because she planned to give Yahoo the robe to make Yahoo indebted to her. Then she would increase the fire and let Yahoo join Mogong's team. As the auction continued, the host said that the next item made him feel entangled because the item's usage threshold was very high and the item's attributes were very good. So the item was destined to be exclusive to only a few people. She told him that their fourth item was an epic drawing skill. Yahoo became very interested because the drawing skill finally came out. A moment later, the host showed the Heart of Steel skill drawings. The skill's attribute was to use blueprints to permanently create humanoid mechs that perfectly obeyed orders to fight, can be changed and upgraded. The bidders were surprised to hear that the starting price of the technique was 2 million. Just last month, the rare level drawing skill was sold for 8 million. They wondered if the auctioneer was afraid of not being able to sell the item because the manufacturing level requirements were too high. But engineering was recognized as the most difficult job to become a master. So only the top large groups were willing to spend countless resources and money to get it out. So small companies with insufficient financial resources can't even think about it. So, over the years, no more than 10 people have earned a master's degree in engineering in the world. Hearing that made Yahoo surprised. He didn't expect that a master's degree in engineering was so valuable and rare. But according to Weiss, spending money is not enough. To become an engineering master, they must have intelligence and talent far beyond ordinary people. Even among the many titles stronger than the previous master Crazy Moss, it was the engineering master who managed to win. Yahoo felt that his luck was very good, because after Weiss came, he unlocked the most difficult engineering master's degree. Therefore, in the future, Yahoo intends to conduct in-depth development and testing around the job. Seeing that item, CU thought that no one would want to buy that picture. Yahoo became confused as to why no one would buy it when the item was obviously very cheap. According to CU, although the mechanism drawings technique could be upgraded with great potential, it was still a single soldier support type. Moreover, even if the user was an engineering expert, when creating a master drawing it would also permanently consume intelligence attributes. So no large company would take the risk for this type of low-yield drawing. Yahoo became interested because no one was buying it. With that, he could make a small step. Since no one opened the price, the host was about to move on to the next item. But he was surprised that suddenly someone ended up bidding two million for the item. The other bidders laughed at Yahoo for spending two million on a piece of waste paper. CU also asked why Yahoo bought the item because the item can only be used by a technical master. So Yahoo wouldn't be able to resell it. Yahoo replied that there was no other reason other than Mecha was a man's dream. But in his heart, Yahoo laughed sarcastically because although for them, this item might not be of much use. But for him, the purchase value was definitely Lime Star. As no one else bid, Yahoo won the picture for two million. Yahoo felt that the picture came at the right time. Besides increasing his firepower, 
With this, Yahu could protect his parents and younger sister. Then, a moment later, the Lucky Ring's special effect activated. That way, the drawing's technique, Heart of Steel, got a random increase. Yahu became more excited because happiness came suddenly. With that upgrade, now the starting level of the Mecha is level 20, and the random gender of the Mecha can now be selected. Yahu became excited because this way, dealing with monsters of the Ghost Eye Demon Spiders level was not a problem. But Weiss said that Yahu's focus was completely distorted. What mattered was not the starting level, but the gender of the Mecha that could be set at will. Just thinking about it made Weiss excited. Because of Weiss's perverted behavior, Yahu also poked her head. Yahu was really happy because his journey was not in vain. His goal was achieved perfectly, even exceeding expectations. He became interested in the last six items to be auctioned off. The next item is the Dragon Skin Battle Shield. This shield attribute has a strong defense effect and reduces the user's damage by 30%. The transaction price was 7 million, worth one star to Weiss. Next is the Blood Sword, which has the attribute that when causing damage to the enemy, according to the amount of damage, 20% of the blood-sucking ratio is converted into its own recovery. The transaction price is 10 million, worth two stars, according to Weiss. After Blood Sword, heating up the event by announcing the seventh lot that would be featured was incredible. The host proudly presented a super-rare epic level, the Summoned Beast Demon Crystal that was unlocked for 10 million. The crystal's attribute is that when the crystal is filled with magic power, the magical creature in the magic crystal can be summoned to fight until the magic runs out. The bidders heated up and started to raise their prices. Yahoo was impressed. There are many types of magic crystals in this world, but this is the first time for Yahoo to hear about magic crystals that can summon beasts. CU also explained that after defeating a boss in the clay realm or in a dungeon, the possibility of dropping a magic crystal transformed from the boss's body is very small. And this summoned beast demon crystal belongs to the top rare existence in the category of battle-type demon crystals. So, it was quite normal that Yahoo didn't know about it. CU then said, there are many secrets in the world waiting to be discovered, but Yahoo can't even touch them at Yahoo's current level. Therefore, CU persuaded Yahoo that if she was interested in the secrets, Yahoo should agree to Mo Kier's invitation to join Mo Gong's team. Yahoo came to think that CU really took pains to persuade him to join the team. He was sure that in CU's eyes, she was like a word in a well, and he had to rely on others to pull him out of the well to see the many blue skies. But she was confident that he was an open frog. With her own strength, she was confident that she could see more blue skies. After a while, the bidding finally ended with a final selling price of 50 million. Weiss also said that the further away, the more expensive the auction item would be. Yahoo felt that it was a pity, so it was better for him to watch the show quietly. The host then said for the next eight lots, he had to make room because the item was so big. After the host jumped away, something huge appeared on the stage. The host presented the electromagnetic siege tank. Equipped with a 2000 mm caliber magnetic rail cannon, a siege-type dungeon destroyer, the bidders got heated again. They became convinced that this auction was destined to be in the pockets of a large group again. Yahoo came to think that today's auction was a real eye-opener. He had obtained so much important information. The penultimate lot had reached this large size. So Yahoo was curious as to what the last two lots of this auction were like. With the electromagnetic siege tank, if the siege dungeon is below level 40, then the tank is one weapon that will destroy everything. Even if it is a level 40, 60 siege dungeon, this tank has the most important and stable firepower output. This tank is the best choice for small and medium teams to open up deserts and attack cities. The host opened the price at 20 million, and each price increase should not be less than 2 million. Since the big family only had a team-only storage room, Yahoo thought that this siege dungeon sounded cruel. Hearing that, CU explained that Dungeon Siege was just one of the types of team battle dungeon. In this world, there were also tower defense, escape and kill, and biochemical warfare, which were crueler, and only the top teams could attack. Yahoo realized that the more dangerous and violent the dungeon, the bigger the reward. 
But if he wanted to get those benefits, he only had two choices. Either join a top team or build his own team. But for him right now, he thought that he was still too early for these things. The tank was eventually won by someone for 88 million yuan. The host then presented the penultimate auction item, a level 100 high-level dungeon key. The price of the item started at 30 million. The bidders were shocked to see such a legendary item. One of them even said that he had been at the auction house for years, and this was the first time he had seen a level 100 dungeon key. According to the information he had with him, the precious resources contained in the level 100 dungeon were at least 500 million. Hearing that Yehu became confused as to why there were fewer bidders than before when it was such a valuable item, Siyu replied that it was because dungeon keys had a valid time limit. So, when it starts, the durability of the lock has entered a countdown. If the durability was zero, the key would be damaged, making it impossible to enter the dungeon. And repeated use of the key to enter the dungeon will also increase the decrease in durability. So, generally, only the top teams would buy such a dungeon key. Hearing Siyu's explanation, Yehu became curious if his level 40 dungeon key also decreased in durability. As Siyu said, a new durability attribute was added, and a little rust appeared on the surface of the key. While Yehu was checking his keys, the price of the keys had gone up to 150 million yuan. After no one else bid, the host finally sold the key for 150 million yuan. Yehu was once again impressed. The dungeon key was sold for 150 million. No matter what era, money does have a real ability. After selling the level 100 dungeon key, the host tried to heat things up with a final item. An assistant then arrived with the last item to be auctioned. The host proudly presented the legendary item, Resurrection Potion of Furious Elf, with a starting price of 100 million. A legendary potion containing the mysterious power to bring people back to life. The item drove the bidders crazy. They did not expect to see the secret medicine of resurrection in their lives. Some of them even intended to pawn all their property just to get one bottle of resurrection. After the item was announced, Siyu became very annoyed with the Qian family because they did not inform her in advance that there was such an excellent product. Siyu was certain that the transaction price of that item must have far exceeded her authority. Out of curiosity, Yehu asked Weiss if the Master of Pharmacy could make a resurrection potion. But Weiss replied that the Master of Pharmacy could not make it because the resurrection potion was a taboo that could not be accessed by humans in any world. The host also explained that everyone knew that after entering the OL Earth era, the skill resurrection had always been a taboo. Even the highest level priest in the world could not understand and control it. And with that bottle of resurrection potion of furious elf, before the user dies, even if they die in battle, the potion user can come back to life. However, the side effect of drinking the potion was to turn into an elf filled with murderous desires and bloodlust. The bidders were worried that the side effects were too expensive to revive from the dead. But the host assured them not to worry, because the side effects only last for one month. After one month has passed, the user will return to being a normal human again. Hearing that explanation, the bidders started offering prices. They thought it was sad that people died without spending money. If they spend money to continue living, then they are willing to pay 150 million. Yahoo also agreed with their words. Life is more important than money. Even if Yehu loved money very much, it would be useless if he died. But what made Yehu more interested was the elf they were talking about, because he was hearing about it for the first time. He became curious if there were other races in this world besides humans and monsters. Since he didn't find this information in books or on the internet, he wondered if maybe the information was blocked. Soon, An Chung bid on the herb for 300 million. Yahu became surprised that An Cheng bid that much. He wondered if Huang Zheng Group gave An Cheng hundreds of millions for the right to deal. Yahu felt that An Cheng was suspicious, but since there was no relationship with him, as long as their interests did not conflict, Yahu intended to let him be. After selling all the items, the host announced the end of the auction and told that there were still ten more rare treasures next month.
Thanks to today's auction, Yahoo thinks that this auction place is really a good place. So when he gets more money, he will come again. Yahoo finally returned with CU and asked his sister if she had finished buying items because it was time for them to go home. But his sister said that she still had one billion bits of equipment to choose from. Yahoo then thanked CU because even though he didn't get much from the auction, he got a lot of experience. CU replied that Yahoo didn't need to thank her because what Yahoo knew today was just the tip of the iceberg. She then persuaded Yahoo to join Mogong's team if Yahoo really wanted to know the whole world. Yahoo replied that he would consider it. Since his sister was still not finished, Yahoo gave her another half an hour as he would also take the opportunity to buy some materials. Recalling CU's offer, Yahoo thought that the desire to explore this world was only limited to curiosity, and he did not want to take any risks. The safety of his family was what he cared about the most. He couldn't put such an important thing on someone else, even if it was better than Hanmo's group. In the end, Yahoo had to rely on himself. In addition, Yahoo was impressed with the drawings technique. Moreover, the materials the drawings technique requested were easy to find, and he had obtained them after spending four million on the black market. Therefore, finally, the next step was the fun programming time. 